In this tutorial, I'll be going over basic editing with raw Photoshop files and how to import a model as an asset bundle. What is an asset bundle? You may have noticed that some models are a bit different than others in that they offer fancier types of materials and effects, like reflective surfaces or smoke. This is because these particular models are asset bundles. Asset bundles offer modders more options when creating content. While the more traditional way is limited to only a single model, diffuse and normal map, asset bundles are virtually limitless in what you can provide. This allows for uses of multiple meshes, multiple texture maps, and higher quality models. On the flip side, however, it's much harder for people to edit if they don't outright have the files themselves. You simply cannot copy and paste a link into a browser and have the files to mess around with. Lucky for you, I just so happen to provide most of the raw files for people to mess with. So what do we need? First, you'll need Tabletop Simulator. Second, you'll need an image editing program. Photoshop is the optimal choice, but there are free options that resemble it, like Krita, GIMP, or Paytool Sci. And third, you'll need Unity. The devs of Tabletop Simulator use a certain version of Unity that allows for the creation of asset bundles to work fully in TTS. You can't just go to the Unity website and download the latest version. It won't be compatible for what we want. I provided a link to their website in the description. Just follow their instructions for how to install it and run it once it's finished. We'll come back to it in a moment. I've also provided a link in the description to my Mediafire and Google Drive where I host the files for my models. Find them all you want and download all the necessary files. For this demonstration, I'll be using Magnus. You can download him as well to follow along. I'll be uploading to Google Drive from now on since it's far easier to bulk download instead of doing it one at a time like Mediafire does. To download the files, right-click the Magnus folder and hit download. It'll download as a zip file, so make sure you have a program that can open them. When it's finished, drag and drop the folder into an accessible place. Inside the folder, you'll find three initial items. A texture folder, Magnus Pose 1, and Magnus Pose 1 COL. Right now we're only concerned about the textures. Double click the texture folder. You'll then see four new folders, each one relating to a certain part of the model. Since Magnus is such a large model, it was necessary to divide up the maps to keep the quality at a decent level. We have armor, body, weapons, and wings. For this demonstration, I'll be altering bits of the armor and leaving everything else the same. Inside every folder, you'll find five JPEG images and four PSD files. The PSDs are what we're going to be working with. We have albedo, gloss, normal, and specular. For this demo, we're only going to be modifying the albedo and the specular PSDs. So what do each of the maps do? Albedo, or diffuse, is the base color map. This is where most of the texture work goes into. Gloss is how rough the surface of something is. More white means the surface is smoother, like glass, and more black means the surface is rough, like scratched metal. Normal maps give the illusion of depth by telling the program's lighting how it should react with the model. And specular maps define how shiny the surface of the model is. More white means a shinier surface, and more black means a more matte surface. One more map that isn't in this folder, but may appear in my previous or future works, is a metalness map. Basically, more white means a more metallic surface, and more black means a non-metallic surface. I'll most likely be using metal maps for all my future projects. Another file that's in the folders, but not listed as a PSD, is an AO, or ambient occlusion map. This map gives proximity shadows to the model, and generally helps with how light and shadows react to the model. Let's open up the albedo and specular map for the armor. I'll be showing you how to easily change or add decals and alter colors. First, we should be on the albedo page. Note that if I were using the metalness workflow instead of a specular, the albedo would be much more colorful and we would be doing almost all of our work in there. The first thing I want to do is change his loincloth colors. Find the folder where it says cotton. Everything is self-contained into masks meaning that as long as you're inside the cotton folder, then everything you will do will only affect certain parts of that model and nothing else. Scroll down to the layer Cotton Base. We're going to double click the first box to bring up our color palette. I'm going to change the color to a deep purple. Next, I want to change the symbol. I'll be bringing in my own logo to swap with. I just drag and drop my logo into Photoshop. This creates a new layer named whatever the file was named. I'll position the logo so that it was where the original symbol was, and then I'll find the symbol layer and shut it off. The symbol layer is called Zinch Mark. You can click the little eyeball to turn layers on and off. Then, we're going to go into our armor document. I want to change the gold color to an orange color for branding purposes. 
Scroll down until you see the gold folder with the gold layer. Double click the first box and choose a color. I'm going to choose orange. And that's it! It's pretty easy when you have proper layer structure and masking usage. Next we're going to save it all out. Our PSD document is set to a 2048 by 2048 texture size. We want a one size lower to save space and resources. Go up to image and then image size. Change both of the 2048s to 1024s. Make sure it's set to pixel size as well. Then go to file and save as. Name it something you can remember and be sure to save it as a JPEG. Remember to do this for both documents. Now we're ready to import into Unity. Load up the program and go back to the top of the folder in the Magnus doc. I've altered my Unity a little bit to make things easier on myself, so it won't look exactly like yours. Just make sure to have a folder to import your models into, a materials folder inside of that, and be sure the prefabs folder is there as well. First, drag and drop Magnus Pose and Magnus Pose COL into your import folder inside of Unity. Then, go into your Materials folder. Drag and drop every texture JPEG file into the folder. You don't have to import the original files that you've edited from. Go ahead and delete the white spheres inside your Materials folder. Next, right-click on the background with all your texture files and select Create, and then click on Material. Name it Armor. While it's selected, up in the top right where it says Shader, click the drop-down and select Standard Specular Setup. If you're using a metalless workflow, then you'll leave it as it is. Do this over again for the remaining three parts of the model, for body, weapons, and wings. Now select your first material sphere, Armor. On the right side of the screen, you can see little boxes with names like Albedo and Specular. We're going to be dragging and dropping our texture files into those boxes. AO goes into Occlusion. Normal goes into Normal Map. Be sure to hit Fix now if it pops up. Albedo into Albedo. And Specular into Specular. Do this again for the remaining materials. After you're done, go back up to where you imported the model. Click and drag Magnus Pose into the scene. If you delete the white spheres from earlier, he should be bright pink. That's because there are no materials assigned to him yet. Before we add materials, he's a bit too big, so we're going to shrink him down a little. While he's selected, press R and click and drag the middle cube until he's more manageable. We're going back into our materials folder and we're going to drag the material sphere onto the model itself. You can see the model update in real time when you hover over his body. Let go of the mouse button when you're over the correct part of the model, and then do this for all the materials. You can rotate the model by having it selected and pressing E. Then click and drag the green line. If you see an area that's still pink, find the applicable material and drag and drop onto it. Now we're going to make some adjustments to our materials. I think he's a bit too shiny and our wings aren't quite right. Click the armor material and slide down the smoothness slider to about 0.6. Body should be 0, weapons 0.6, and wings 0. Of course you can change these to whatever you think looks best. Now while we're on the wings material, change the render mode in the top right from opaque to cutout. Now we're going to apply our collision. Click on the model so that everything is highlighted. Over to the right, click Add Component. Go down to Physics and then click on Mesh Collider. In the new window where it says Mesh, click on the little circle. My screen's a little bit of a mess because I've been doing other projects, but find the cylinder until the base under Magnus highlights green and then double click to apply. In the bottom left where you can see the hierarchy of folders, find the prefabs folder and click on it. Once inside, at the top left where you see the name of our model, click and drag down onto the folder area. Then in the bottom right where the longer bar says none, click that and hit new. Name it something and then hit enter. 
When you're done, right-click the empty space and hit Build Asset Bundles. This will export your model as an asset bundle. Find the folder where it exports out to. It should be within the main files of where you install Unity. When you find it, you can leave the file in there or place it somewhere easy to find. I like to make a new folder on the desktop. Now, go into Tabletop Simulator and make a single player game. Click on where it says Objects and then select Components. Click on the Custom box and select Asset Bundle. Select the little folder for the first box and locate where you put the asset bundle. Double click the file and select Cloud. If you hit Local, no one else will be able to see the model. Select Model for the type and whatever sound material you want to make, then hit Import. I recommend saving the model as soon as it's done loading and then making sure the base size is correct. I've provided a link to the workshop item that contains the correct base sizes. Magnus uses a 100mm base, so just line it up and press plus or minus to make adjustment. And we're done. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and thanks for watching.